Good morning, folks. It was a relatively calm day on our star once more, but with a few uptick signals present. A plasma filament snakes on to the Earth-facing disk here. Got a couple of those incoming. We took our first relevant sea flare in days, but expect more by the 13th when Mars conjoins the Sun. Over at spaceweathernews.com, which will now have periodic highlights posted near the top of the page, we see the sea flare from this morning, perhaps the start of something, or perhaps not. The sunspots are not gaining complexity at any real rate. The sea flare can happen without much flare-making potential, and indeed, we're lacking that potential until we get some growth or movement or both. Solar wind. Density dropping off now as the speed plateaus. And the plasma temperature is dropping off as well. This means that the magnetic storms are likely over, and the magnetometer will begin looking smooth again soon. But the electrons are not just coming up off the floor. They had a 500x increase in flux over just three hours last night, and over the next few days, it's expected to rise even more, potentially hitting radiation storm levels. The surface charging of satellites kept up all day, including the red, but it never got predominant, and we never saw internal charging. That makes it a minor event. The incoming coronal hole on the left needs another day to get here, especially since she lost a bunch of power overnight. Top quakes of the day hit Greece, well above average there, one unusual location rumble to the south in Eritrea, and then another on the Carlsberg Ridge, which might be random or it might be related to the nearby Earth spot. Indian Ocean cyclone now turning west towards the Middle East. Back across the world, Blanca is raining hard, but weakened after landfall while we begin to eye another system to the southeast for development. Top news. The Tropical Rainfall Measurement Mission satellite was replaced by the GPM. It ran out of fuel, and about 10 days from now it will re-enter our atmosphere and burn up. The gray areas are the re-entry potential zones. A lot of emails came in last night asking about this post, which discusses the curious case of 67P shooting jets even after sundown. The confusion came when the article described how solar heating is now enough to cause the jets to remain. And yes, for those who emailed, that is completely wrong. It is the electricity that always surges through that, and it's enhanced by more interaction with the solar wind now that it's closer to the sun. That's causing the jet activity, not photons or solar heat shared that story a couple days ago. The Discover satellite has reached the L1 Lagrange point and will begin sending back data in the coming days to weeks. Very much looking forward to it. Last on the news front is the May climate report for the United States. We'll check the high temperatures and the lows. Let's start with just the month of May. Kind of a flip-flop from the past two years, it was record warm for a tiny slice of the northeast with a massive cold zone to the southwest. Those are the max temps. The low temp records are much more tame, but for the record warmth in Washington. Looking at 2015 so far, January through May, reveals the normal eastern cold, hot out west, with records at the coast to counter the record cold in New York. Coldest start to any year ever. All the while, the heat indeed kept blasting out west. Looking at the last full year, back to last June, max temps are a mix of cold and hot with the all-time records in both directions. Not so much with the minimum temp list, heat winning that battle. Remember last night's United States Convergence Line. Watch the clouds pop along it. That will happen again tonight to a lesser degree, especially with it moving offshore, but we also will have a heat flow to a northern low that makes me want to tell Minnesota and Wisconsin and the Dakotas to check your local forecast tonight. Major hail potential there. Be careful. In Europe, the pop-up storms continued in the south, but the main story has become this northern cloud curl here. Gorgeous form to it, off a reinforced wind drive between a low-pressure node and a high-pressure cell to the south of it. The high will dictate where that reinforced flow goes. Down under, the clouds cutting through New Zealand here bring the top alerts for this region. It is all about the convergence cutting through there which goes all the way down to a low nearer to Antarctica. We're going to go behind the ground level current conditions so you can see how we get each of those on the wind map. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.